All right, so uh, let's call our meeting to order. Uh, we have Rochelle calling in via phone, which is perfectly legal to do. Otherwise, we're all present. And uh, so that's that. There's no public hearing today. And now we get to have the announcement by board members of items removed from consent agenda. So are there any items that uh, you would like to pull? I just wanted to clarify something on 4.1, uh, which is the well, we approval of the minutes. We should probably pull that then. Yeah, we can pull it, but I, I don't need a vote. I just want to correct the. Should we no, let's do that. Let's, let's pull it and <coughs> we'll correct that one thing. Okay. okay, anything else? Seeing not, okay. Um, we'll pull that one item, 4.1. I'll. Um, I'm going to abstain from the minutes, item 4.1.1. Um, otherwise, I'll approve the room. Oh, wait, we're going to do that separately. So I guess I'll, I'll um, make a motion to approve the rest of the consent agenda. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Director LeHue? Yes. Vice President Lather? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniel. Yes. So that's the consent agenda except for the minutes. So we bring that one afterwards. We do that after the all the administrative business. Is there no longer public comment on the consent agenda? Uh, you can, yeah, you you can comment on it. We're um, not going to pull it, though, but you can okay. comment on it's, it. Okay. Um, well, there, were, uh, there are actually some members of the audience here tonight that wanted to pull an agenda item from the consent agenda for discussion at the last meeting we changed the process which is shown on the front page of the minutes the new process mm -hmm. so you have to get a director to pull an item so people from the can public you please can't. tell me where on this agenda it says that first page I see announcement by board members of items removed from consent under a consent it's the uh, fourth sentence in that um, consent agenda procedure a member a public member may request that a board member pull an item from the consent agenda prior to the start of the meeting I see that uh, now this is new this is. is the first time it would be very helpful for members well, it's of the public. actually the second time because we we talked about it at the last yeah, meeting. That's it. Which I think this is the first that meeting that it's been. Well, then um, may um, I and other members of the public please comment on some of the consent uh, a consent agenda item sure. before you sure. approve it. Sure. Thank you. Can I have more time, please? I was verifying procedure. All right, looks like I'm not going to get it, so I'll just go ahead. My name is Becky Steinbrunner. I'm here to uh, talk about item 4.10, Alta Drive Trench Pavement Repair Project. I read that that you must, uh, by roll call, uh, vote to approve the actions on this. Alta Drive is in a sorry state of disrepair. And um, I went over that road today, and it's it's of concern. And so some of the people here are residents and also concerned about that. And I want to point out that there is a um, an improper date on the letter to you from uh, County Public Works. It's dated 2010. I believe that's an incorrect date. So I want to point that out to you. But I want to, above all, ask that uh, you do side-to-side -side paving and not just the trench repair. Um, it is evident in Alta Drive in these areas that uh, the, the trench from former work sank. And that is, uh, it was due to public um, concern that Matt Machado from Public Works did issue you the letter, which I think just has an incorrect date. So again, I want to support the people who depend on that for their roads, the fire agencies who depend on it, um, that you do side-to-side -side paving for any work in that area. Thank you. I'm sorry, I don't know any of the procedures. I just heard that you're going to talk about the street that I live on. and. Also, that Mimi and Ken files. Well, actually, we've already approved that, but you can talk about it if you would like. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I, li I also drive as a long hill that comes down from the freeway and ends right pretty much on our properties. And uh, years ago, um, 
there was a swale placed on the road so that the water comes down the hill and pretty much just inundates our properties and fills up the garage and the basement. And we've been speaking with the county for a long time to try to convince them to reconfigure, re-engineer the road so that the water doesn't just come down one side of the road. And I believe that the sunken trenches makes it worse because it makes it just a spillway that pours down into our properties. And I'm hoping that um, we can ask for the aid of um, Soquel Creek Water District as you redo the trenching that, um, that we can repave in a way that our properties are saved. Did you want to say something more than yeah. that? We have the property next to Mrs. Baker's, and uh, my in-laws owned the property from the early 70s, and uh, when the swale was put in on a previous pavement job, it directed the water into three houses right at the bottom of the hill, and uh, they flood in a heavy rain. Uh, our garage uh, gets silt and water, oh, maybe a quarter inch deep, and uh, the bakers, uh, their backyard is, uh, it's a quagmire. And uh, my mother-in-law said that <clears throat> it wasn't this way till the previous pavement job. And the swale comes down Alta Drive, and rather than follow Alta Drive, they did almost a right angle turn, and it goes down this little private lane that we're on. And I just asked that maybe this could be uh, considered if all to drive is paved. We had an engineer come out. Uh, I think uh, it was Ellen Baker, I believe, that wrote a letter to the county. And uh, the engineer said the county would not have done this sway in the direction, excuse me, that it now goes. So I just thought I'd bring this up with uh, possibility of the road being paved. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, and just mentioned, you know, the county still owns that property, not us. And the county, you can see in, in the minutes, the county has sent us a letter uh, asking us to do some work there. And it's still under the county's direction. So it's not, not our project, really, in some sense. So. Right. So we've been in touch, uh, Supervisor Friend and the county public works director, Matt Machado, has been in contact with us. You know, our we're not a road agency yeah. and this is an option that we'll we'll look at when we get the bids and we'll bring it back to the board um and we just thank you for your input and we'll look at that when we get the bids thank you. can i just ask a quick procedural question how would we find out what's happening how could we be kept up to date well you can come to the meetings i mean well, everything the road, the road you mean? everything uh, yeah Nothing's going to happen until after the bid uh, opening, and, and that then shortly thereafter we'll award it to, uh, we'll bring it to the board for award. Right. So if you look at the agenda for the board, you'll see it come up at some point. If you want to leave us your name and number, we can't promise it uh, because we can't get back to everybody, but we'll try to alert you when that item is, is up. Thank you very much. If you can um, leave that with uh, Melanie here in the back, name, number, and the, and the subject, you know, out the, the road and all that. Okay, we have approval of the minutes. We uh, deferred, and that will occur at the end of the uh, agen agenda items, the uh, administrative business. So that's when that'll come back. Oh, that's how we arrange things. Okay, so oral and written communications. So anyone who wishes to address this on any item, not on tonight's agenda, this would be the time. And you have three minutes. Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. I would like to address your board on the procedural changes that um, you have voted upon. I understand that you do want efficient meetings and everyone does. What I see though, I mean, you don't ever have a big, I mean, this is a big turnout <laughs> tonight. So shortening the amount of time that people have to speak to agenda items, I think is, uh, somewhat short-sighted and really in the spirit of transparency 
which your district prides itself upon, it would be, I think, good to uh, make the public uh, uh, have them allowed to have three minutes. Most people don't take it. I also really would like to um, ask that because you have instituted new policy here regarding the consent agenda, that when there are major uh, changes like this, that it be explained. It's not up to people who have never been to your meetings before to try to figure out what's going on. Even though I come to your meetings, um, this is new to me. A simple explanation by the chairman at the beginning of new policy would be very helpful for those who are here for the first time and those who are maybe just not remembering new policy. Um, I also want to say that I think your board owes people the opportunity to come speak and to to be able to do so without interruption. And I, I understand that some speakers are very difficult to listen to. It makes it a very tense moment for everyone when members of the board or the chairman tries to shout someone down. And it actually becomes tense and counterproductive. In, and, and I appreciate that it is not always easy to hear and listen to what some people say. But in the spirit of, um, transparency and efficient meetings, I would much prefer as a member of the public that you just allow the person to have their say without trying to interrupt them, without trying to correct them, without trying to argue with them. It only inflates the anger that has brought them to say what they're saying. Um, I, th I guess that's all I want to say. Um, I think you're good people. I think you care. And I think we all have a lot of commonalities here. And what I want to say is that if you give people the chance to speak what they want to say, they'll calm down and it will be a much better meeting. Thank you. Anyone else to wish to address us? President Daniels, <clears throat> I may, if I may make a comment after sure. you. So <clears throat> on the um, agenda, as we have up here, what we tried to do, our aim was and uh, Emma and I work together on this, <clears throat> and we're certainly open to feedback, is to make it uh, very accessible to any member of the public, especially people who have not attended the meeting. So under each item, uh, it's well spelled out what a member of the public may expect and how they may approach it. And so if we go down to the other items, this was our intent anyway. So under consent agenda, these items are routine business, one votes, done by the you know by the board and how items are pulled that sort of thing and the length of time and then down here for oral and written communications you actually get up to three minutes and how that works and then even to go on to down below here so we've made a concerted effort to put in writing just to help people follow on we didn't have this before so we think this is a you know a, a benefit to the agenda to help uh, a member of the public guide their way through this. We should also mention that in doing these changes, we were following the procedures set by the county because they do it the same way and the city of Santa Cruz. So it's not strange. It's in fact us kind of following what most of the agencies around here already do. So they do it the same way. And finally, just on this, th it really was an effort to encourage more people to uh, to comment be, because it would curtail some of that acrimonious comment that we've been getting that intimidates people who come to meetings for the first time. But also this entire procedure is subject to a review after a few months to see how it's been working out for us and for the members of the public. So it's it's not it's final for now for sure, but it's we will be reviewing it to see if it is um, efficient and efficacious in helping people uh, helping us all achieve our goals of communication. So we go on next to the reports, of which there are none, and then now we go on to administrative business. So the first thing is conditional and unconditional will serves item 7.1.1. <coughs> Good evening. Yes. It's been a while since we've had a will serve brought to the board. Um, this is bringing, uh, being brought to you because it exceeds 1.0 acre feet. Uh, this is an empty lot that is going to be split 
and then a duplex added to each site along with an ADU. Um, the applicant has paid the 10% deposit and um, is ready for your consideration. Okay. Any questions of staff? Yes, I have one. Please. I was at, actually, it's probably easily clear. It is easily cleared up, but I was just, do you mean by duplex there's two apartments on the lot split will be a lot split and then two apartments on each lot and then an ADU in addition to that? That's right. So that's why the high volume. It'd be about six living units total. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Any public comment on this item? Seeing no one, back to the board. What's your pleasure? I'll move approval. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Director LeHue. Yes. Vice President Lather. Yes. Director Jaffe. Yes. Director Christensen. Yes. And President Daniels. No. And that passes uh, four to one. So that is done. We now move on to item 7.2, which is adopting a resolution authorizing reimbursement. So the district, um, I'm, I'm going to present this item tonight. The district has um, contracted with Piper Sandler to be our financial advisors, and they are looking at opportunities for debt issuance for us in the coming months. But one of the things they wanted to make sure we could do would be to reimburse ourselves for any expenditures that we, we might incur prior to the debt being issued, um, one of those being a real property purchase um, at Chanticleer. So this is simply a reimbursement resolution that authorizes us to reimburse ourselves out of any um, debt proceeds for any um, money that we put out now for a property purchase. Any questions on this? It's pretty straightforward. Seeing none, okay. Any public comment on this item? <coughs> Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner. I do have a question. In the course of the legal action that I've taken against the district for the Pure Water SoCal project, um, General Manager Ron Duncan did state in uh, a, a sworn declaration under penalty of perjury that all um, debt beyond the project had to be claimed before February 29th, 2020, or it would not be eligible for reimbursement. That sworn declaration made the court take the stance that it is a, it, there was a sense of urgency. So I want to remind Mr. Duncan, and I will provide a copy of that legal document to you, that after February 29th, no, um, according to Mr. Duncan's declaration, no costs for the project can be reimbursed. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Pleasure. I'll move approval. I second. Roll call, please. Director LeHue. Yes. Vice President Lather. Yes. Director Jaffe. Yes. Director Christensen. Yes. And President Daniels. Yes. So now we move on to item 7.3, which is about the purchase of the Chanticleer property. Yes, back in uh, May 7th, 2019, the board authorized um, a district representative to sign an option purchase uh, uh, for the property. And so we did that about a year ago. And now in, in that motion or a separate motion, you said, if we're going to purchase the property to come back at another time, and that's what we're here to tonight, uh, approve the wording and the terms in the purchase and sales agreement that's attached to the memo in the board packet, uh, direct um, the authorized district representative, we would say the board president in this case, to sign the purchase and sale agreement for the real property, and then dr to direct staff to move forward with the associated actions to purchase the property. So that's it in a nutshell. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Any questions of staff? No. Nope. Any public comment on this item?
Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. Um, I just want to make it public information here that this is $3.2 million in repair money to buy this piece of land that is not within your service district boundaries. For a, a project that is still under litigation, for a project that had, in my opinion, f faulty um, environmental review and should be reviewed again. I remember December 18th, 2018, when you approved the project and certified the EIR. County First District County Supervisor John Leopold came to your board that night and asked you not to do that. And one of the tenets that he had that you should have noted was that, in his opinion, he felt that you would not be able to um, declare the cost of the land as part of the project cost. And therefore, very likely, it could not be reimbursed with state money. I would like to make sure that you have verified that. I would like to hear from your council the, the status of the reimbursement for this $3.2 million land purchase. I also did not see in the uh, documentation that the district has done its due diligence before buying this piece of land. It has a long history of both agricultural and industrial use. I saw no evidence that um, there has been testing for any soil contaminants. There is some sort of a well on the property that is visible from the road. What is the status of that well? Will it be closed? What will the permitting be necessary to, to handle that? And what about the archaeological survey that was not able to be done for the draft EIR? Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Just a quick, you know, comment about the fact that, you know, the environmental review was deemed to be thorough and adequate by a judge. So that is all. Was there, did staff want to come on anything? Or? Due diligence has been done. Okay. Well, then I'll make the motion, all three motions. I'm, I'm excited to move forward with the project, and this is just another step. I will second those three motions. Roll call, please. Director Lehu? Yes. Vice President Lather? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniels? Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, we move on to 7.4, authorize entering into a design build for the, for the conveyance part of the project. Hi, good evening. Okay. Both Taj and I are gonna split um, providing a quick presentation to you and before we open it up for questions. But tonight we're very excited to introduce item 7.4, which is about entering and authorizing a design build agreement with um, Garney and Kennedy Jenks for the conveyance uh, project of Pure Water SoCal. So we did pres uh, um, create, I think it's about an eight, eight slides or so that we wanna just walk through again um, for the board. And, and those in the public, and those who may be watching on television. But again, the Pure Water SoCal project is a project designed to uh, replenish the groundwater basin, address the critical overdraft, and meet the state mandates of the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, as we are one of 21 basins that have been identified as critically overdrafted in California. Um, part of the project's objectives is to also ensure that we're developing an affordable, reliable, and drought proof uh, supplemental supply that um, increases diversification of our water portfolio and it also in enhances and addresses climate change. Um, as you can see in this figure on the right, um, the Pure Water SoCal project is part of the district's community water plan and that is a long-term plan that was created based upon the community values that we've heard from our customers as well as other community stakeholders. And in it includes you know, prioritizing water quality, reliability, doing a project that's timely, um, something that can be scalable, is affordable, and is environmental. 
Um, the Pure Water Silk Health Project, as many of you know, since we've been evaluating it for many years, is a project that would take secondary treated effluent from the city of Santa Cruz, treat that water to tertiary levels, convey that water to an advanced water purification facility where it would go through a multi-step process to purify it, and then that water would be sent to injection wells uh, to create a seawater intrusion barrier. The project, um, now that we are going into construction and implementation, we are procuring and going forward with uh, design and construction with the project being three kind of um, packages. The first package is the uh, source water uh, treatment at Santa Cruz and at um, the advanced water purification, so that's considered our treatment project. We also have the conveyance infrastructure project, which is the focus tonight, that would convey the water from the, the treatment sites out to the injection wells. And then the third package is obviously the seawater intrusion prevention wells. Um, this project, Pure Water Soquel, is designed to treat um, and produce 1,500 acre feet of water for the district, but it is sized and scaled so that we could um, upsize the project if needed for the, to meet the uh, mid-county groundwater basins objectives or for other needs in the future. I mean, as you can see on the right, <coughs> we have been working for some time with many regional stakeholders, including the city of Capitola, the county of Santa Cruz, the city of Santa Cruz, and also um, the RTC. Do you want to do this one? I can do this. We're going to tag team. And okay. so uh, tonight we're talking about the pipeline that uh, travels from the city's wastewater treatment plant down near Leary, Neary Lagoon. It comes up uh, to California Street, down Laurel, uh, to Broadway, to Frederick, to Soquel Avenue, and then over to Wharf Road, making its way past the district's office uh, to Rosedale and, and Monterey Avenue, and then finally over to Willowbrook and near Cabrillo College for the, for the recharge wells. Um, so tonight we have a team uh, in front of you. They're actually sitting in the audience. Um, Garney um, Pacific is a general contractor and they have subcontracted with Kennedy Jenks to help get this part of the project finished, uh, designed and then built together as a team. Um, I'll back up. The first segment between the wastewater treatment plant and the Chanticleer site is going to actually have two pipelines in, in the same trench, and that's um, part of the design effort here. Um, the final blue line going from Chanticleer to Aptos is just a single pipeline. Any questions about that? Okay. We did just want to highlight the process in terms of our um, selection tonight. As you rem may remember, um, about a year and a half ago, the district went through a workshop talking about how we would be uh, procuring and designing and, and constructing the project. And the delivery model that was selected was a progressive design build, which means that we would be um, procuring a team of a designer and a contractor that would do the work for us. And we would do that in a two-phase process, the first phase being the preliminary design, design, and, and data collection, and then construction. I mean, so with that model, the district went out and we uh, did a very, I think, a very robust uh, early engagement on the process. This was something that the district wanted to make sure that we had um, people that were aware of the project, that the project was coming. And so we did conduct quite a few um, I think touch points for people out in the industry that we were doing this project. And as listed in our um, staff memo, uh, we listed how we had been in contact with, you know, over 20 interested firms who were looking at what kind of project the Pure Water Soak Health Project program would be and what kind of packages we would have. We also held a disadvantaged business enterprise and minority business enterprise um, open house. We um, put this project out as an RFQ, RFP process, meaning that we were going to release a request for uh, qualifications. And the district did do that in, in May when the uh, board approved us to release these RFQ. We posted it not only on the Soquel Creek Water District website, but we also posted it on the California Special District's RFP Clearinghouse. Um, 
When the board approved re releasing the RFP, they also set a uh, review and selection committee. And that committee comprised of uh, the general manager, the engineering manager, the operations and maintenance manager, the special projects communications manager, and two board members, Dr. Uh, LaHue and Director Lather. Oh, well, okay, I'll do the rest part. Okay, um, following the release of the RFQ, uh, the district um, did receive one from Kennedy, Jenks, and Garney, um, and um, when we posted the RFQ on the website, we actually had 68 people access the RFQ. So um, in receiving that uh, statement of qualifications, the district's review team did review it, and we shortlisted them to receive the RFP. On August 12th, the district uh, issued that RFP, and on October 11th, Garney and Kennedy Jank submitted the proposal for the progressive design build services for the conveyance infrastructure project. Yeah. So um, the Garney and Kennedy Jenks team is uh, is a highly qualified team. Uh, Garney's been in business since 1961. Um, not a stranger, not new to pipeline work. Most recently, they installed the Monterey Peninsula Water Supply Project, which um, was a $73 million project, pipeline project which consisted of 85,000 lineal feet of 36-inch ductile iron pipe and another 13,000 lineal feet of 42-inch PVC pipe. Um, big scale projects, they're nationwide. Um, I'm confident that they'll be able to, to get us a pipeline from A to B. Uh, Kennedy Jenks is also um, a seasoned design firm. Um, they are, they have worked in the area, they're familiar with the area. Um, they've, their bio says they've, they've designed up to 55 miles of pipeline. So pipelines are also a strong suit for their firm. They of course do other um, engineering uh, disciplines, but between the two of them, we're gonna, uh, and, and the district's team, um, we have a very narrow time frame to work with, and we're anticipating being ready to lay pipe in around October to November of this year. So a lot of work to get done. Uh, and that work is outlined in the scope of work that is attached to the board memo, um, attachment one. And there are 14 tasks associated with the scope of work. And uh, Garney and KJ, along with the district, we've looked at this scope of work, we've refined it, We've tried to, to make sure that the level of effort is, is adequate for each task. Um, it's, it's this phase one is what you're, you're considering tonight, and that gets us right up through about construction, start of construction, then what we'll do. Um, so between now and then, there's gonna be a lot of project management meetings. They're gonna review all the existing utility drawings from along that stretch. They're gonna conduct um, geotechnical borings. Um, they're also gonna be doing potholing throughout the, the alignment um, to verify existing utilities. They're gonna conduct hydraulic modeling and surge analysis that will feed into the treatment plant design work. Um, along that route, and I have some additional slides, they're gonna be providing cost estimates and, and giving the, the district an update as we go on the anticipated cost. They have uh, some permits to obtain, as well as the district has to obtain some permits. Um, we're not gonna, we're gonna have public outreach and we're gonna have a website and a, a, a phone line in case people are uh, asking questions. They, they have a way to contact the team. And then of course, there's a 30% design, a 60% design leading up through a, a price that we'll be bringing back to the board. Um, and then there's a 100% design package uh, that we also have in the scope of work. Um, so this, what you're approving or, or considering tonight would get us through about January. And then, um, you know, we looked at their proposal when we got it and we did an independent cost analysis. 
and we believe that it's the level of effort is adequate and it'll get us through uh, this phase. Um, we do like to remind the board that this is a, a professional services contract and you know they will be billing at a time materials basis and we'll be looking at all the invoices and, and working with them to make sure that it is is adequately billed. Um, it is an open book accounting, so they're going to share with us, and, and they are entitled to a, a markup that they've already listed, and it's in the agreement. Um, and currently, that's a, an 8% overhead and profit um, markup. And then come October, they're going to present us with a guaranteed price that they will build the pipeline for, and then we'll consider that and bring it to you uh, as a board to, to approve if you wish, and that will be a phase two amendment that will be processed separately. So that'll take a separate approval. Right now, you're just approving design work. Um, and I should mention that um, they are gonna give us a price in 90 days after getting started. Um, that's, of course, gonna be based on what they know now um, or after 90 days of look getting, look getting into it. So they'll still need to refine the price. And as design gets more refined, the price will be more refined. Um, I already talked about the guaranteed price coming in around 60% design. And right now the schedule shows construction lasting from October of this year through November 2022. We did establish a milestone so that the first segment gets completed in July of 2022 to make sure that there's no delays in plant startup. And then the remainder of the pipeline can follow and be finished uh, substantially completed by October 31st, 2022. I mentioned the 4% overhead and 4% profit that is uh, was listed in their proposal. And if at the time of the guaranteed maximum price, the district decides to do a lump sum option, which would be less um, of an open book process, then they would give us a discount of 1% on that 8%. And that is something that we can, of course, discuss as that comes later in the, the process. Any questions on those slides or we can get through? We just have a few more slides and then we can answer uh, any questions you may have. I think this is the last slide and then we can go to the motions. Just in kind of summary, the efforts that Taj mentioned for phase one, um, the the cost is just over $5 million. It's $5,058,583. And that price was included in the district's uh, approved 2019-2020 budget. Um, as Taj mentioned, we did do an independent cost analysis, and also, as you know, the district was awarded the Prop 1 groundwater grant implementation funds for $50 million. So that will help fund both the design as well as the construction of this conveyance infrastructure project. I just wanted to just point out that this whole progressive design build idea allows a lot of input along the way through the design so that we're happy with it's part of the process with with how it's looking and how it's coming along and we can have input so that we get the project we want I think and I just wanted to, I think it's a good good way to go yeah if I may capitalize on that <clears throat> it is kind of where things are going these days matter of fact the city of Santa Cruz is trying to change its charter so it can do this kind of work also I want to quickly introduce the team if you wish to, to know the faces behind the names. Um, from left to right in the back row, we have Sean Summers. He's going to be our project manager during phase two. Uh, Dennis Sanchez is with uh, Kennedy Jenks, and he's going to be leading the, with his team, leading the uh, design effort. Uh, Bill Williams is there. He's the man behind Gar Garney in the western region, and we're fortunate to have him uh, you know, guide this project. He's got over 30 years of experience with this type of project. And Matt Roberts is also um, on the Garney team. He's been helping us get through uh, phase one up to this point. And in the front is Ron Ablin. He's with Brown and Caldwell, and he's been designated the project lead to get us through phase one and maybe even through phase two as needed. So strong team. I think we're, we're 
ready to succeed and get started. If, if you guys have any questions, we're able to answer them. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Dylan, you know, it's a big, big ticket item, very big ticket item. Um, so the independent cost analysis, can you tell me more about that? I can. That was performed by Brown and Caldwell, okay. independent of Kennedy Jenks, independent of Garney, and um, a gentleman by the name of Scott Higby is based out of Colorado, and he took the task, the scope of work, which is attachment one, and he went through it a lot, task by task, and basically did it as if Brown and Caldwell was going to be performing that work. And, um, you know, some tasks were a little higher, some tasks were a little lower. But at the bottom line, we came up with a very comparable um, price between the two design efforts. And that makes us feel um, confident that it's a fair effort. Um, there's, you know, it's, it comes down to well over 10,000 hours worth of work. And, and so it's not just one or two people working on this between now and October. Um, the 100, over 100 sheets on the design. Um, they're cataloging over 600 potholes. And it is a um, extensive effort in order to get to, to have a smooth phase two and not have as many surprises. We're trying to do our homework up front so that we're, we're not on the street longer than we need to. We know what we're going to get into before we get into it. There will be, of course, underground surprises, but at least for the ones that we know about, we're going to we're going to have a plan before we get there. That led to my question because yeah, that's that's a lot of uh, trenching and undergrounding on roads on a lot of major highways through Santa Cruz or traffic areas. Are are you going to focus on the first half, uh, like the? Uh, wastewater treatment plant to Chanticleer as a primary build focus? That's what their schedule shows, and that's the right approach considering the milestone completion date of July 1st, uh, 2022. We don't want that to be holding up startup. Um, there's certain segments in the coastal zone that, that we'll have to wait until we get the coastal permit, but majority of that can be done um, coordinating with the county and the city. Um, and once that's finished, then they can move forward with, you know, the purified pipeline. But that is the, the critical path item for them. And I know this is a level of detail that hasn't been decided yet, but I just want to encourage phasing of different segments when it's built to have minimal impact to schools, and traffic, et cetera, you know. It's not, it, there's going to be an impact, but I think we would do well to, to minimize that impact. And also outreach to, you know, give people plenty of head, heads up on where, where their areas yeah. is going to be impacted. Yeah, there's a robust um, outreach program surrounding this, and they've had experience with this, to, you know, down to the houses, <laughs> neighborhoods sort of thing. Yeah, and, and they're, they're prepared to do night work. We know there's some areas that we'll be doing night work at. Okay. Um, and, and some areas will be possibly looking at um, trenchless technologies if it gets too complicated to 41st Avenue. You know, we may just go trenchless if we have to. In fact, I noticed that traffic is part of the design process that we're talking about here. It's, uh, it's not just going to happen later. It's going to be... You know, laid out before they even start so that's good to see yeah and you know public works departments in all jurisdictions we're going to work closely with them and, and have encroachment permits and they're going to be monitoring the construction as it goes and give us feedback if they need anything changed um, yeah I wouldn't want to minimize this this effort this is a major effort but this is what uh, water districts and wastewater treatment plant districts uh, do as part of their their services that they provide they get this done for us in the community and this is it was a massive kind of effort that got piping throughout the county to provide water to all of us so it was, it's something that you know our own district has some knowledge in this too and they are actively participating in i had one question it's kind of extensive but let me get into it um background for it 
Um, the two wettest months of the year here are January and February. And in fact, in January, because of the rains we had in January and December, we were two inches ahead of normal by then. And uh, so far in February, we have had zero rain. And the prediction is that the rest of the month, we will have zero rain. So February looks like it's going to be completely dry, which is quite extraordinary. You know, again, you can't say something like that without saying the word climate change. And so given that, um, you know, that's kind of scary to think that things are happening like that. So we today are almost five inches below normal now. And if this continues, as the predictions have for the, till the end of the month, uh, that'll put us seven inches below normal. And there's no sign that necessarily, when we get into March, it's suddenly gonna start raining again. So that, you know, we could even go even further down below. So it gives me thinking about, you know, We've built, we've, we've, we've figured out a project that we can build and then room for expansion. So we could add to more membranes and so forth. And I'm wondering about, we, we have three injection well sites. And I'm wondering if we shouldn't be thinking about the possibility of maybe being able to expand that. Perhaps to add a fourth injection site. And it turns out we're gonna be doing another um, uh, line down Soquel Drive. So the thinking is, wouldn't it be nice when we're putting that new water pipe in there to put another pipe in there, pipe, you know, close it off at both ends, but that would then allow us to go down Soquel Drive if we need to and put another injection well along that way. Uh, since we're doing all the work, uh, that would be a, a nice thing to do now rather than do it later. And so that's my question is, uh, should we be thinking about something like that? Maybe we could learn more about where you're thinking of, ex of stubbing out. You're thinking for future. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure where on Soquel Drive you're anticipating. Well, I don't know, I don't, I, but certainly somewhere further to the east. Would, I mean, we, our three wells are kind of located fairly close together in the center of our district. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that the city puts stuff further to the west of our three wells. And so the natural place to think about putting an other injection well would be further to the east of our three. So it'd be somewhere down Soquel Drive. Okay. And so let me make a suggestion um, so we can get a better idea. <clears throat> Let's make an appointment. Okay. Can you, can you come in and meet sure. with staff? Sure. That would be awesome. Um, do that. So it wouldn't have to be complete, but I mean, to go ahead and put in a pipe along some extent there while we're putting in the Soquel Drive uh, replacement. Uh, Are you talking about the cast iron main replacement? Yes. Oh. So we're, we're supposed to start that sometime this year, maybe. And uh, there are certain setbacks that we have to meet. Of course. So of course. that would be a separate trench. All right. Yeah. OK, well. Um, let's, but still, let's call them. Let's okay. range through Emma or me. Uh, we can sit down at least further understand it, just to make sure we're not. There's no guarantee we would need that. But if we turned out we did need that, having done some of that work already could save us a lot. So that was my question. And of course, during that discussion, there'll be discussion of whether, you know, environmental impact report is required. Yep. So yes, yeah. it would. It mm -hmm. would be. Okay. Any other questions? Public comment. Yeah. Public comment time. Thank you. You have two minutes. Thank you very much. My name is Becky Steinbrunner. I am the um, pro per litigant for public benefit in this uh, legal action. And uh, gentlemen, I want to let you know that this is not a popular project within the public at all. <laughs> and so you have to prepare yourself for a lot of resistance, and it will come. Um, I would like to follow up with what uh, Chairman Daniel said about the possibility of other expanded injection well sites and remind the board of the Haley Aldrich hydrology report that Cabrillo College had done independently that called your current placement of the three injection wells very curious because it really doesn't fit with what um, the stated goals are. They're not even in the areas where uh, there has been a problem with seawater intrusion. I also want to point out that uh, this is five point, nearly $5.1 million 
Your rate payers have already been burdened with an 18% rate increase. And by the time the five years is up that your Raftelis consultant has outlined, their rates will go up another 27%. This does not fit your project goal of having affordable water at all. Many people are struggling now and you've heard from them and you're only raising their rates more. I want to point out that there has been no discussion of energy incremental uses in this project. Uh, there will be inline pipes in all of the conveyance project areas that were not considered thoroughly in the EIR. I also want to point out that there is very little discussion in this contract regarding environmental mitigations. There was no consultation with of Department of Fish and Wildlife or the Coastal Commission. Thank you. Your time's up. Can I have one more? No. no. <clears throat> Direct, uh, President Daniels, yes. may, may I make a couple comments? Sure, please do. So regarding, um, I think it's best to get the correct information out. Mm -hmm. Regarding the placement of the wells, they are in the optimal place where seawater intrusion has been shown to occur in the aquifers right along the coast. The geophysical survey done by the SkyTim people from Denmark and then confirmed by uh, Stanford University shows those wells are kind of in the bullseye area where we exactly where we'd want to pull them, put them. Not only that, by putting them there, it allows it to prevent seawater intrusion, but also pump those wells a little bit more and pump the other wells along the coast, creating, if you will, an iron curtain against seawater intrusion, or at least a much better barrier than what we have now. So the placement is, is actually awesome. As far as affordability, as we sh have posted on our website, and we've shown several times, this is the most affordable project that can get the job done. In fact, the economic study done by the uh, Dr. Haddad and a PhD student at UCSC showed that it's about a $1 billion uh, positive impact to the community, and for every dollar invested in the project, you get $9 back. So it's the, it's the least expensive and the only one that can get it done and has a positive. As far as energy goes, I'd just like to say that it, I think this is beautiful in the sense that most of the energy or a large portion of the energy is already spent taking wastewater and treating it to secondary levels and send it out to the ocean. So we each pay about $800 a year, roughly equivalent to many people's water bills, just to have our uh, sewage treated and, and then to a level that's acceptable. So that, that level of energy is already embedded. We're just going to take that and capitalize it and then purify it. So I think that's a real positive. And then on top of that, all the energy used for the project will be green energy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, I, I also just wanted to mention that, you know, the whole Mid-County area, based on multiple scientific investigations and, and, and say that this, to protect the water for the entire basin, this is a necessary project. So. Um, In fact, if it wasn't for this project, we'd be in violation of the state's uh, uh, Sustainable Groundwater Act. Right. So I would like to make both of these motions. Okay. I'll second. Roll call, please. Director LeHue. Yes. Vice President Lather. Was that me? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Director Jaffe. A lot of money, but I think we need to do it. Yes. Director Christensen. I appreciate all the work that went into it. I vote yes. And President Daniels. It's needed. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, folks who are going to do all this good work for us. We appreciate that. Yes, thank you. We're counting on you. Yeah. <laughs> so we now move to item 7.5, uh, approved district staffing and reorganization. Um, good evening, board. I'm over here this time. Oh, hi, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're presenting to you um, a proposal to, uh, again, do some restructuring of our organization. It's something that we are constantly looking at and making sure that we have um, systems in place and staffing in place that really uh, give us um, efficiency in, in um, efforts. And um, the, the proposal that we're presenting to you tonight um, 
kind of addresses a couple of items within the uh, special projects and outreach, um, excuse me, a special projects and communications department. So the first two items um, included in your uh, memo, um, we took a look at the public outreach coordinator classification and the communications program specialist classification. And we're presenting some changes to each of those. Currently, the uh, public outreach coordinator um, doesn't coordinate staff. Um, it coordinates an effort of outreach. Um, and um, we really looked at maybe uh, kind of creating a, a job family, um, as a HR term that we use, um, in order to create, uh, really put uh, directed efforts forward for our public outreach. Um, we, we do a great job with public outreach, but structurally, we had two positions that were equal in terms of rate of pay um, and level of responsibility. Um, currently, we have a vacancy in our communications program specialist classification. And so with that, um, we've taken some time in order to figure out what we want to do with that. And we've really come to the conclusion that it makes a whole lot of sense organizationally to actually take that specialist position and create a lower level position so that we really do have a true job family uh, within the, the outreach efforts. And so the proposal in that um, section of the memo is really to uh, revise that communications um, program specialist position, take it to a lower level. We use some internal comparability um, to determine that staffing, the coordinator position, has implied um, coordinated coordination efforts of lower level staff. And so we included those in the job description for the coordinator. And again, looking at internal um, comparability, we do have some internal comps that, that align to what we're proposing to you tonight. In addition, we're making a recommendation to um, make a change to the manager of special programs and communications um, salary uh, uh, pay grade. Um, in terms of, again, looking at the efforts that the district has been making in ramping up towards this building and construction of the Pure Water SoCal project and the level of responsibility for um, this position, we've made a recognition that we might be um, in a position where we're not in compliance with our state equal pay laws. And so taking a look at those obligations as an employer and making equity between um, a two classifications in our management level um, to, to meet the, uh, the uh, equal pay um, laws standard in the state of California is what we're proposing to, to have equity with the, um, our current engineering manager and the special projects manager. Any questions? Just no? a comment. I just, on the last part of that, I really want to thank our current special project manager and the level of effort and dedication and energy to be driving this huge project has already gotten us to where we are now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to go up front and say I think that's a great idea. Well deserved. I agree. Mm -hmm. I do too. So any public, questions? I think a public comment. Is there any questions? Okay. Public comment, please. Yeah. Seeing none, bring it back to the board. Well, I'd like to make the, the motions to um, change the, the job duties for both the communications specialist and the uh, manager special projects and communications and also correspondingly change the salaries that are proposed. Like, can I second something? You, you can. <laughs> I think you just did. <laughs> Roll call, please. Director LeHue? Yes. Vice President Lather? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniel? Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, we're now going to go into two closed sessions. Uh, any public comment on those closed uh, sessions? Uh, President Daniels, we still have a 4.1 that got moved down to the bottom. Oh, oh right. yes, thank oh, you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> That's the problem with this new change, isn't it? <laughs> 4.1, approval of minutes. So I only wanted to um, let everybody know that the Aqua GP, JPIA meets on Monday, before, two days before the conference begins, which is on a Wednesday. Right. It, oh, this pattern is the same every year after year, twice a year. And it doesn't, uh, the actual meeting's at from 1.30 to 4.
that's it's easy to have it's an easy meeting to get to from Mon if it's in Monterey especially so. and in fact all the committees or certainly most of the committees certainly the ones we care about groundwater uh, water management and water quality all meet on Tuesday and they're free so you can go and join those discussions and see what you want to gather from it uh, without having to pay for all the uh, the conference yeah yeah so it's yeah, especially when it's in Monterey, I, that's the reason I yeah. want to bring it up to today because it is in Monterey this year, so mm -hmm. it's an easy way to catch some of those activities, right? Activities. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Uh, that's so I'll move to approve. Okay. <laughs> minutes. I'll second. So we should have public comment. Yeah, public comment public on this. Comment. Seeing no one. Back to the board. So we have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Director LeHue. Abstain, I was not here. Vice President Lather? Yes. Director Jaffe? Yes. Director Christensen? Yes. And President Daniels? Yes. So that passes, and now we can go to our closed sessions, two closed sessions. Anyone wants to speak on this? Yeah. Thank you. My name is Becky Steinbrunner. I'm the um, appellant in case H0477333. That is the new case number that has been assigned to the appeal of the Pure Water SoCal project and against SoCal Creek Water District for the public benefit. I'm not the only one, and I want to make that very clear. I am not the only one. The Sixth District Court of Appeal last week formally accepted the transfer of the case, the appeal that was um, first um, lodged with the Santa Cruz Superior Court Appellate Division and was later reclassified and sent to the Court of Appeal in San Jose for consideration, and they did accept that. So that will be moving forward. Um, your counsel in Riverside did ask for calendar preference, and that was also granted. Um, I do have to let you know that I may be um, f facing some uh, surgery, and so that I may need to ask for uh, an extension of time. But I mostly want to uh, speak a little bit to the issues at hand. I am appealing it because I was barred by Judge Schmall from being able to um, pursue a leave to amend my complaint to correct things and add information. And because of that denial, I was um, not allowed to argue things such as growth inducing. The um, AMBAG and Santa Cruz County housing element both state that the limiting growth factor in this county has been infrastructure, notably water. And also the discussion of energy was not allowed. There are many other issues, and, and the and, uh, Twin Lakes injection well will be directly upstream from your own production well and small private water companies. Thank you. Mr. Haddad's cost-benefit. Cost well, talking about faults, uh, the... Uh, the person we, we just were hearing from did amend her thing. She was allowed one amendment. She was not allowed a second amendment. And uh, so that's, that is the case. All right, so we move to a closed session now. Thank you. <laughs>